Patrick for inviting me today and for such wonderful introduction. Hello everyone, I am really excited to see you today at my talk. And to start, instead of introduction, I would say that it's an awesome publicity for a movie being announced as based on the play by the former president of Ukraine. It happened in 1921 in Berlin to Black Panther, produced by Johannes Guter in the sets of German Expressionism with the Ukrainian actress Elena Polovitska. You can see her on the slides as a female lead. Uh, this film was based on Lichenko's play of the same title. But had Vinichenko ever been the president of Ukraine? shall we ask ourselves, as uh, he had different positions in Ukrainian government. Uh, among those positions, the main were the head of the General Secretariat of Ukrainian People's Republic and obviously the head of Directorate of Ukrainian People's Republic, though you can see that he was offered also some positions in Soviet government for a really short period of time. And at the same time, he offered political narratives for independent Ukraine as an author of the text for universals, universal legislative acts of the Central Council of Ukraine. The first one proclaimed the autonomy of Ukrainian People's Republic on the 10th of June 1917, and Ukrainian independence, which was the most important, was proclaimed by the first universal on the 22nd of January 1918. Ukraine as a Soviet Republic lost its independence when it became the part of the USSR on the 30th of December 1922. And at the same time, Volodymyr Vinichenko was a really multi-talented person, a writer and a painter, as you can see from the whole range of his self-portraits. So that's a typical fin de siècle person embodying the synthesis of arts, or the, shall we use this German word, Gesamtkunstwerk, synthesis of arts, Gesamtkunstwerk Vinichenko, you can say. When approaching Vladimir Vinichenko, we begin with two statements which might seem provocative. Uh, decadence can be regarded as a political project, and political narrative can be construed as cinematic narrative. Decadence as political project. By decadence we mean neither the general process of decline of a nation or decay of humankind, nor the historical period of decadence in the later Roman Empire, but the all European fin de siècle decadence in the beginning of the 20th century. And decadence in politics is usually characterized by utopianism, panestheticism, humanism, moral relativism, and pacifism. In Venichenko's case, utopianism resulted in his socio-economic principles of solidarism and collectocracy or solidarism for the future republic of Earth based on concordism, world harmony. But aestheticism was formulated as Venichenko's principle of beauty and power in a number of his works. <coughs> Humanism forced him to start with socialism as many fin de siècle decadence did, though Venichenko, apart from them, broke with socialist ideas in favor of collectocracy, the principle of collective property. Relativism of morality embodied in his principle of honesty with, with oneself. Finally, pacifism resulted in Venichenko's idea of the UN-supported referendum-based global disarmament. Before addressing these five points in detail, we must explain how the political narrative may function as a cinematic narrative. It's not a coincidence that the cinema emerged almost straight before the World War I, uh, and therefore war chronicles were among the earliest genres in film. Film art from the very beginning aimed at becoming the art of crowd influence, of power, by the end of 20th century, it became clearly, clearly understandable how an actor or a scriptwriter becomes an elected head of a state and how the cinematic narrative can function as a powerful political narrative. 
In motion picture art, Venichenko actually had several, let's all to say, roles. He was an author of numerous plays, the main part of the film adaptations were produced after his death. He authored several screenplays, uh, mainly not produced. He tried to establish the national film production in his lifetime, Ukraine Film Studio. He became a screen character for several chronicles and a number of full-length feature films. And finally, he authored an original political narrative obtaining cinematic dimensions through his novels and film scripts. As a screen character, Venichenko mm -hmm. mostly appeared episodically among the other leaders of government of Ukrainian People's Republic. Surprisingly, his adventures and artistic life has, had never become a subject for a decadent biopic, uh, though it's definitely worth being a subject for, for such biopic. Uh, the gallery of Venichenko's screen portraits was actually started by uh, Alexander Davzhenko, the founder of Ukrainian national cinema in the USSR, as Venichenko appeared twice in his works in Arsenal. It was uh, some anonymous writer just implying Venichenko, though quite recognizable, uh, whereas in a uh, sound film uh, Shorts um, uh, about the establishing uh, of Soviet regime um, in Ukraine, um, Venichenko appeared under his proper name in a dispute with his colleagues from a central council of Ukraine. Uh, actually, Dovzhenko did sarcastic sketches of uh, Venichenko, not only on screen, but in a number of caricatures for Soviet newspapers. Uh, by this way, Dovzhenko obviously tried to overcome his own nationalist past, including his military service to uh, Ukrainian People's Republic. He tried uh, to conceal um, uh, while his uh, career of a Soviet film director, and the antipathy was mutual, as Venichenko said about Dovzhenko's main film main films, Zvenihoya and Earth, what a helpless and naive childishness in acting, composition and even plots, how dare they screen that in Paris. Uh, the only relevant uh, screen image of Venichenko appeared in the film Kotilbinsky Family, um, uh, produced by the Ukrainian film director Timofey Levchuk, where uh, Venichenko is represented in Kamiya as a decadent writer who had just finished his novel Notes of uh, 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 Snub Nosed Mephistopheles and what happens next to him. Uh, as a subject, uh, he becomes. Sorry. Uh, it's some issue with the projector with, with, with batteries. I am sorry, Megan. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. Because actually, uh, what we are about to start with from this point is a kind of some short photo film. As you know, there are lots of uh, kind of. Uh, Let me try it now. Um, yeah. <laughs> That works. Thanks so much. So, uh, so that um, uh, that the film we are talking about, the Tsubinsky family, and uh, Vladimir Benichenko, um, performed by a Lithuanian actor Haris Lipich, uh, and what happens uh, to uh, this film character as a subject? He becomes uh, split uh, on <coughs> Benichenko Faust and uh, Benichenko Mephistopheles in his dream, and uh, some. Uh, uh, of his remarks. Maxim Gorky, the proletarian writer, Russian writer, cursed us decadence. But if we want to raise Ukrainian literature on the European level, we must accept the fact that decadence is also Europe. It's quite important for us in uh, Europe for today's job. Fall asleep. Oh, damn. The, the Mephistopheles comes out of. Uh, the sleeping figure is the tune Mephistopheles. Uh, Mephistopheles is obviously Venichenko's doppelganger uh, in uh, this scene. He appropriates the details of uh, his own biography. He is saying, I was born in a hamlet but got a degree in law and emigrated to Paris afterwards. I prefer moral subjects for conversation, your honesty with yourself. Venichenko says, how dare you, honesty with oneself is a sublime principle. It's me who introduced this principle for humankind. That's why I have loved you, said, says Mephistopheles. One more important point. Stop talking on morality. 
what's new have you brought to politics? Apart from that, when the chair comes with Fitchett and Chronicles, and his screen counterpart was Simon Petura, who started as a Secretary of Military Affairs in Central Council of Ukraine and headed the directorate after Venichenko and some of those chronicles uh, entered the Soviet documentary by Leonid Mogilevsky, Documents of the uh, Epoch, uh, film, um, uh, edited uh, at uh, Ukrainian State Film Factory uh, Vufku in the uh, 1920s. 28. And uh, it's really kind of a screen conflict. Uh, the conflict of Venichenko and Petrovia became the major conflict of the plot of Ukrainian independence, leaving behind <coughs> the third man, member of the board, an academic Mikhail Bushevsky. It was a conflict between the discourse of an unambiguous military Ukrainian nationalism represented by Petrovia and uh, the split political identity of Venichenko. As it was stated, Simon Petyura headed the directorate after Venichenko resigned in 1919. While Petyura tried to go on with the fight for Ukrainian independence in alliance with Poland in 1920, Venichenko claimed Petyura's uh, directorate as illegal. He regarded for a short period of time the opportunity of alliance with Russia and communists, but his attempt of collaboration failed almost at once. He became disappointed as in Bolsheviks. Despite the fact that Venichenko broke with the USSR government and preferred to stay in immigration until his death in 1951, he became denounced as a hostile agent by the Western supporters of his rival, Petyura, which closed for him many publishing opportunities in Ukrainian diaspora and prevented him from obtaining a US visa so that he had to remain in France until his death. At the same time, in this rivalry, Venichenko often described Petlura cinematically as a bad actor who needs his own stage at any price and wants to please different audiences no matter on what ideological grounds. Petlura might uh, have also been regarded in somewhat different way as a decadent politician, obviously through the lens of modern Yiddish Anglophone historiography. As for Venichenko's plays, there are more than 20 film, film adaptations of uh, these plays and stories, including shorts, and most part of them were filmed straight before or after the Ukrainian independence of 1991, uh, and focused on the idea of decadence, on subverting norms of sexuality and uh, general morality in Venichenko's so-called ethical symbolism, as it's a very peculiar trend uh, in fantasiac European cinema. Symbolism, uh, which was questioning um, such categories as the law, the sin, the lie, which were titles of his main plays, of his main plays, uh, as the autobiographical example of uh, Mephistopheles clearly shows, his plots are usually focused on a Nietzschean decadent infernal figure of a strong man, destructive towards other characters, especially females or political rivals. Uh, blackmailing, seducing, driving to suicide, and uh, uh, to uh, most um, to brightest uh, examples from uh, different film uh, adaptations. Uh, on the slide, these are the uh, leading uh, Ukrainian actor of 20th century, uh, Bandai Stupka, featuring as uh, Gendarme Stalinsky uh, in um, the scene directed by uh, Oleg Bima in the first year of Ukrainian uh, independence. And another even more exciting uh, example uh, was uh, Amo Bek Nazarian, uh, an Armenian uh, actor uh, who um, contributed to uh, the cinematic decadence of Russian Empire and uh, in Soviet state he became the founder 
of uh, three national uh, film industries uh, in Armenia, Georgia, and uh, Azerbaijan. So that really important uh, um, character of uh, Stalinist era film industry, the laureate of uh, Stalin's prize for the first Armenian uh, sound film uh, Zangezur, uh, and uh, this very Amo Beknazayan embodied this uh, strong man uh, called Ivan Stratonovich uh, in the uh, unknown um, film adaptation of Nichenko's uh, play uh, The Lie, um, or Lies in uh, Ukrainian translation. Uh, the Lie uh, remains the only uh, successful uh, decadent film narrative uh, by Vinichenko in his lifetime, uh, filmed exactly when he was a prime minister of Ukraine. It's 1918. Most of Vinichenko's film projects remained incomplete, including his own film scripts, uh, The Son of Israel or Solar Machine, uh, and um the same incom inc incomplete was uh, the project of National Film Studio Ukraine Film, started together with uh, his German and uh, Georgian partners, uh, but uh, the light, uh, uh, the lie uh, survived uh, um, uh, the, uh, both uh, this film and the script of Solar Machine were actually my personal archival uh, findings, uh, so that um, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, just quite uh, a bit of work um, for research regarding those um, film projects uh, and uh, as for solar machine as Eric said as such kind of uh, uh, utopian project uh, first it was uh, a novel the novel solar machine was written in Germany uh, in 1925 and published in Soviet Ukraine uh, in uh, 1928 when Venichenko had already moved to uh, France uh, there is uh, also uh, um, uh, such legend that uh, Venichenko was uh, able uh, to um, uh, buy his mansion uh, in uh, France uh, on uh, honoraria uh, from Soviet publishers for Solar Machine, but uh, there are different uh, versions uh, that uh, he was paid this uh, amount uh, um, when he resigned um, yeah, to uh, rule the directorate uh, of Ukrainian People's Republic, so that there are always uh, numerous versions uh, when we are talking uh, on the politician who is a writer at the same time. Um, uh, it's obviously the most cinematic uh, of Venichenko's uh, writings, defined as spectacle like um, uh, novel in Ukrainian, Rom Roman Vidovich. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, film screen, this film project was supposed to embody on the screen um, Venichenko's um, uh, theory of uh, sunism or in Ukrainian sonceism. Sun is Sonce in Ukrainian, and as uh, you can see on the slide, uh, this idea was popular in armed war uh, works uh, since this image by um, an American um, painter, Louis uh, John Reed. Uh, Venichenko was actually uh, the first uh, who addressed the solar economy in fiction, um, uh, solar economy as a basis for egalitarian society, or as Venichenko would put it, um, yeah, a solarist republic. Uh, of Earth. Uh, in his novel, people uh, uh, learned uh, to produce solar bread as a universal substitute to all other foods. And uh, different goods um, can also um, uh, be obtained from this uh, solar production. Uh, by that time, solar energy uh, had, had already been discovered by uh, a number of uh, scientists, including uh, Albert Einstein. Um, uh, but uh, the film um Great solar machine was written obviously for a, a German film company but remained uh, unpublished and non filmed. Uh, well, we may say the same about um, uh, the uh, social or uh, socio economic project of uh, solarism uh, in uh, contemporary Ukraine. It's uh, just uh, uh, something to come. Uh, so when Nichenko's main political, cinematic, fin de siècle narratives of solarism, collectocracy, and concordism are awaiting production, he preferred to formulate his main political ideas in his spectacle-like of filmic novels. Apart from Solar Machine, these are 
two uh, so-called political concepts in images rather than novels. Um, uh, it will address to fighters for independence and uh, the last novel by Vanichenko takes the floor Stalin where his uh, political concepts of collectocracy and uh, concordism are formulated. What he means by these concepts, collectocracy, means collective ownership for businesses and enterprises in contrast to private ownership in capitalism and state ownership in communism. Both capitalism and socialism prioritize wage labor and alienation of surplus value from the laborer, while in collectocracy the laborers own um, uh, so surplus value and are allowed to have private property, uh, though not isolated. Collectocracy returns the surplus value to laborers and ex excludes the wage labor. Collectocracy uh, aimed um, at non-violent transformation um, and um, it was supposed to challenge the idea of bipolar world. Um, as this bipolar world was described by Venetienko as Wall Street versus Kremlin. And he mentioned collectocracy as a bridge between these two poles. This bridge spreading all over Europe. Where was it supposed to start? Why not Ukraine? Shall we? And concordism from French Concord, Harmony, for Venetienko had nothing to do with uh, Biblical Concordism, uh, which means bringing theology in accordance to the science. And, uh, but um, uh, Concordism, it's rather a name for Venetienko's version of the New World Order. Instead of a unipolar or multipolar world, he offers the idea of global community, the zero power center, the so-called World Con uh, Concordist Federation of Nations. Concordism can also be explained through radical ecologism correlated with decadent, decadent uh, escapism and a new morality. And Venetienko himself, together with his wife Rosalia Elishis, practiced subsistent economy in their mansion in France, uh, uh, robism, uh, naturism, and specific way of thinking described as honesty with oneself, uh, banning from imposing any moral prejudices. Uh, and um, this principle should be the world uh, should have been the world uh, view basis for uh, the first attempt to approach the idea of uh, European integration of independent Ukraine uh, and uh, Venetienko um, approach, approached um, this uh, uh, idea first in form of European protectorate uh, before the World War II. Not only is his novels, uh, but uh, in a number of his letters uh, to um, world government. Uh, he also proposed that a number of uh, industrialized countries uh, form that European protectorate uh, over Ukraine to rid it uh, of Ukrainian uh, of Sorry, of Russian Bolshevism and to appease uh, Germany. Uh, and uh, it was one of the main points uh, uh, of Venetienko's um, uh, anti fascism, uh, as uh, he claimed that in World War II, Ukraine. Actually, Ukraine, not the USSR, was the main aim for Hitlerism, and under the pretext of national liberation from the yoke of, of Moscow, German capitalism needed Ukraine as a colony, uh, as a rich source of raw materials and a large market for their goods. But if Ukraine were decolonized from the USSR, and given the independence, Hitler would not have been able to exploit the narrative of liberation on Ukrainian lands, which might have led to Ukrainian collaboration with Nazis. On the other hand, Germany might have been given wider access to Ukrainian goods and natural resources to raise its um, post-war demand. German economy after the World War One uh, 
uh, which was basically destroyed, uh, and uh, uh, there would have been no need uh, in conquering also those Ukrainian resources for Germany. Uh, otherwise, when, as Vinichenko uh, predicted for Ukraine, the war on the east of Europe will be localized for the sake of anti-war fight, as it had recently happened uh, on the west of Africa. He obviously meant uh, the Italian campaign in Ethiopia. And several very reasonable, reasonable resolutions um, uh, condemning the aggressor's uh, expansion will be made as an overall result. Something quite similar to what we can see today. Uh, and. Um, one more important thing he, he is saying, and uh, Nazism plans the expansion to Ukraine not because it's a rich country, but because uh, that my reason it's the least defended country in Europe. Nazi invasion to any other European territory would have violated the praised European balance, but the invasion to Ukraine would be of no harm to that balance. And one of the solutions to that problem which I perceive in global anti-war referendum, uh, which remained a utopian uh, project, but uh, it's really important what he is saying that humankind's Humankind needs uh, first of all uh, economic and social disarmament and the military disarmament just following. This idea of global anti-war referendum was addressed by Vinichenko both to European and Soviet governments, but uh, obviously uh, he was not regarded as a figure of power by them, so that uh, on the one hand uh, he was not supposed um, uh, to uh, be heard, but on the other hand, when Nechenko uh, would still uh, remain uh, some um, um, uh, f uh, figure um, uh, appealing for Ukrainian masses, um, uh, which were supposed to shape a new uh, Ukrainian state. That's why actually uh, he was uh, addressed uh, by um, uh, Nazis uh, with a request um, for collaboration. Um, and uh, put to, to a concentration camp uh, as he resigned, but as uh, Vinichenko would say, well, uh, it's uh, um, uh, really quite uh, an uh, interesting uh, plot awaiting for some further research because there are uh, also quite different uh, versions, and Vinichenko himself offered uh, different um, uh, versions uh, of this uh, uh, very weird uh, attempt uh, of uh, integration of. Of, um, um, uh, this kind of uh, new collaborative uh, state under his name while he was ignorant about that uh, and uh, um, uh, he was uh, arrested for some short period, period of time by the occupational government in France uh, but uh, as Vinichenko concludes uh, it was uh, still the name of uh, Vinichenko um, supposed to integrate um, the Ukrainian people it was not um, uh, the name of Petluga and uh, the idea of radical nationalism. Uh, so that, uh, what should we say in conclusion? Uh, that the final version of Venichenko's uh, political narrative, uh, breaking with communism and radical nationalism, was um, obviously inspired by his fantasiacal decadence. And what might have seemed uh, utopian in his lifetime uh, has already partly been fulfilled. Uh, it's first of all the idea of political independence for Ukraine and some parts uh, of this narrative are currently being realized. Uh, solar economies, uh, uh, radical ecologism of life paths uh, defined as concordism, shift of moral norms in gender and sexual politics, and something still left for future, the third path of solidarism between capitalism and communism, and uh, uh, the second referendum-based global disarmament, where the role of Ukraine is not messianic but important, and off-screen projects of cinematic decadence um, have much better chance to become produced, not 
not in on screen, but in political practice and social design. Thank you. Okay, we have some time for questions. Uh, questions for Professor Kurova? Um, thank you so much, Olga, for, for the wonderful uh, presentation. I was wondering uh, if you could tell a little more about the uh, movie script for uh, The Solar Machine uh, that you discovered, because that really is a fascinating find, and uh, inquiring minds want to know more. Uh, sure, uh, I, I, I understand your point, Vitaly, as uh, it's kind of, uh, um, uh, it's, it, it's a part uh, of a general mystery of Vinichenko's uh, archive, uh, um, uh, which is um, uh, part of a question um, yeah, of Ukrainian archives uh, threatened uh, in wartime, uh, and um, uh, as uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, we are um, well, uh, in, in, in some last uh, days the fate of the main Ukrainian film archive in Dovzhenko Center is uh, uh, being sold in Ukraine, uh, and uh, um, uh, but not the less uh, problematic is uh, the fate of American archive uh, of Volodymyr Vonichenko, which uh, remains. Um, uh, and basically undigitized uh, and um uh, which uh, um, uh, is lacking in inventory um, so quite a few bits from uh, this archive uh, are uh, ex explored and uh, published but uh, without any systematic approach I mean Venichenko's uh, archive in Ukrainian uh, Free Academy of uh, uh, Sciences uh, in uh, New York uh, so uh, so that um, uh, I have found uh, this text just uh, by chance, <laughs> so there were uh, piles of uh, boxes in uh, this archive uh, uh, in New York and I would just uh, open uh, some box on the top and uh, saw this um, uh, um, uh, script uh, which uh, did not en uh, enter any inventory before then, uh, which um, uh, uh, actually, uh, had, ha hadn't been uh, uh, published in, uh, any, bit, uh, any, any bits from uh, uh, this uh, script um, had not been published, uh, uh, so that um, uh, it's a kind of uh, really um, uh, mysterious thing with uh, this uh, film script, uh, as um, uh, we don't know. Um, uh, the studio or um, the producer it uh, might have been ordered by uh, as um, uh, the editors of Venichenko's diaries uh, published from uh, Uva Uvan um, stated uh, that Venichenko uh, tried to set it up for uh, his Ukrainian film project, uh, but uh, it, um, it was obviously too early for uh, this very novel, as uh, this project uh, um, uh, took, uh, 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 took place first uh, in uh, his um, German years in immigration, while um, uh, he collaborated uh, with um, Johannes Gutek and uh, German studios uh, and his uh, Georgian partners, as uh, uh, he uh, did not um, uh, uh, give uh, up uh, his uh, attempts to establish uh, national film production uh, on Ukrainian uh, film. And, and uh, um, uh, he did not want to uh, give up until uh, 19... Um, uh, 24, uh, 1925, and uh, uh, 
after that it was different to Korean film. It was Korean film without actually uh, Vanichilka. So that um, uh, uh, we don't know who might have ordered this uh, film script. We don't know who might uh, actually um, uh, be going uh, to uh, make a film adaptation. Um, we've got uh, just um, a manuscript. Uh, um, uh, basically uh, repeating uh, uh, the novel, but the novel is huge, so that kind of the, mo the most uh, cinematic uh, scenes uh, from the novel uh, were selected by uh, Venichenko uh, for the film script. So, uh, so that, that's uh, what uh, I'm trying to work uh, on, uh, setting up some fragments from this uh, uh, script, uh, uh, and um, it, 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 it would have been a good idea if, this, if there was some opportunity for publication of this uh, film script before uh, it uh, might actually uh, have disappeared. I'm, I'm really sorry to say, as, uh, you know, the, uh, as a whole story with the archive is in New York. Uh, yeah. Just a quick fill in for those who might not know. So, uh, as you heard from Professor Kirillova, uh, Venichenko lived uh, the final years of his life in uh, uh, France, but uh, his widow then donated the archive. The archive was deposited both with an uh, diasporic Ukrainian organization in New York City called the Ukrainian Free Academy of Arts and Sciences. And they, they in turn, put it at Columbia University uh, Bakhmetsev Archive for safe storage and safekeeping. And even though it's been more than 70 years since Venichenko's death, the archive has not still been fully studied. You know, there is no, in, not been properly inventorized. And a small portion of it was sent back to Ukraine after it could gain independence, but the majority, the remaining majority of materials is still in New York. And yes, it is sitting in boxes that are not cataloged, that are not properly sorted out. And it's a shame and a conundrum that, you know, it's taken this long and it's still not good result. Yeah. Uh Thanks so much, Vitalia. I'm grateful to Professor Chinetsky for explaining the mm -hmm. whole background mm -hmm. and the role of Grigory uh, Kostyuk and mm -hmm. uh, other important scholars uh, who contributed to this American research. I would just add that uh, these were basically uh, paintings uh, mm -hmm. by Venichenko uh, um, uh, returned, uh, repatriated to uh, uh, Ukraine by the government of Viktor Yushchenko. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it happened, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in uh, uh, 2005. So, uh, so, so that as for manuscripts, uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 I might uh, be ignorant of that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think you're correct. Paintings. It's just his yeah. you know, visual or heritage that goes yeah. around that. And, and we don't know what's uh, been happening to uh, those paintings uh, during the war time. Can I ask a question? I guess following up on the, the diasporic angle, but. Um, how emigration changed his thinking? Because, uh, and I realize, you know, as, as uh, Vitaly was saying, with, with unprocessed archives, it's hard to, to get a, a full picture of his thinking. But I, I get the sense from your presentation that there was a broad continuity, a striking continuity, because in, in many cases in emigration, people really change their politics. Um, and um, in some ways, his decadence or, or embrace of sort of decadence, decadent aesthetic, seemed even greater in the 20s and 30s. I mean, even as that sort of period of time was farther and farther in the past, and certainly in the Soviet Union. And so, I'm wondering if you could talk about this experience of immigration, how it how it affected his thinking, um, and uh, you know, particularly in France, because there's so many different emigre communities uh, that he's probably interacting with. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, um, yeah, basically, uh, there was uh, no uh, politics <laughs> which was supposed to be changed, uh, as uh, he uh, 
um, lost any political uh, influence, obviously, and uh, even his uh, early attempts uh, um, in uh, immigration to um, uh, establish ties uh, with uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, communists uh, or communist parties uh, uh, in exile, they were not that successful, so, uh, so that uh, he just had to give up uh, these attempts uh, of uh, uh, integration even with uh, European communists and kind of uh, the most uh, thing we might uh, say about him that uh, uh, he majorly felt uh, isolated, uh, um, uh, not uh, uh, the last reason for uh, that uh, was uh, his uh, break with uh, Petr Lubovich we mentioned. So, so, uh, so, so that uh, I would say that uh, actually uh, uh, it's my feeling that uh, this um, uh, attitude uh, towards Vendichenko um, uh, is. Um, uh, still being preserved uh, in uh, um, uh, many circles uh, of uh, uh, Ukrainian intellectuals uh, um, as uh, um, uh, he's uh, um, uh, not really uh, accepted uh, um, as, uh, as a Ukrainian or as Venichenko would put it, uh, I, I, I was uh, exiled uh, from Ukrainian uh, nation and he meant not only his uh, uh, exile from uh, Soviet Ukraine but uh, uh, he meant uh, also um, uh, this um, uh, perception of um, uh, himself as a stranger for any uh, circles uh, and um, uh, this uh, uh, life, uh, 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 this life on his own, um, uh, as uh, I totally agree with you, which uh, 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 might uh, um, uh, make his decadent uh, ideas sound even more powerful uh, in some uh, late years uh, of uh, uh, his life, uh, when uh, um, I would say. Um, uh, he would not um, uh, have always um, uh, uh, acknowledged uh, that uh, private can be political, uh, as um, uh, uh, obviously um, in the uh, middle of 20th century uh, this um, idea was uh, uh, just uh, implied, uh, but um, uh, this uh, uh, way of life uh, we have uh, mentioned, uh, including uh, uh, raw foodism, naturism, uh, this um, uh, self-supporting uh, from agriculture and, uh, and, uh, and so on and so on, uh, which um, uh, might um, uh, have become um, a basis uh, uh, for ecologist biopolitics. As uh, we've got a number of uh, um, current uh, perspectives in biopolitics, uh, uh, quite polarized, but uh, uh, the um, uh, offer a draft for more optimistic perspective uh, uh, in biopolitics uh, and um, uh, what else we should um, uh, add uh, in this view uh, is actually uh, um, this uh, uh, paradoxical st uh, status of um, Vinichenko who was uh, expelled from any political uh, uh, circles but uh, uh, still uh, he um, uh, remained uh, in um, uh, correspondence uh, well, uh, with uh, uh, many political leaders and uh, I, I, I'm sorry to say uh, first of all uh, with Joseph Stalin as uh, the best of his ideas uh, are formulated uh, in uh, his uh, letters uh, to um, uh, uh, Stalin and uh, he was hoping to uh, be heard even in terms of this uh, kind of giving the independence to Ukraine so that uh, Hitler uh, would not uh, 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 come as uh, Hitler uh, uh, liberator uh, and uh, uh, Zhao um, uh, he remains this uh, uh, figure of uh, escapism uh, he still uh, uh, remains some uh, figure 
of uh, influences, uh, he would uh, uh, get uh, different uh, offers to uh, head certain movements or governments. Well, uh, as uh, um, uh, you mentioned this uh, example with Ukrainian uh, Nazi government, with, uh, with uh, which uh, this offer, which uh, he rejected. Um, uh, so, uh, so that uh, I would say that Vanichenko in immigration uh, really had to rethink the very notion of the political. Other questions? And if you'd like to come around, there's, there are chairs back over there. Thank you. Thank you for this very interesting talk. Um, I wanted to ask, so you mentioned that a lot of his um, screenplays, or even the plays themselves, have not been, let's say, successfully uh, adapted into films. But are there any films that you would actually recommend watching as good, quote-unquote, adaptations of Vindatanko? Because I love his plays. I've read a lot of them and really enjoyed them, but I have yet to see a film that I really like, and I haven't seen that many. So maybe you have a recommendation. Uh, well, <laughs> it's a great question, and uh, uh, of course, uh, first of all, uh, I would uh, uh, advise uh, the lie uh, as uh, uh, the best uh, or. Um, yeah lies after the uh, recent Ukrainian translation uh, by George Mikhaichuk, right? He offered this Russian um, uh, lies, but uh, um, uh, we have to, um, uh, well, it's uh, also a, a question of repatriation of archives uh, as uh, uh, the lie uh, is it's a question of uh, repatriation uh, of actually Ukrainian heritage from Russian film archives, which uh, had always been a problem, but uh, which uh, uh, is totally impossible nowadays. Uh, uh, but uh, we can still work with a digital copy. I tried to work with this digital copy, but uh, there is no official edition for this uh, uh, film, so that uh, unfortunately it cannot be found uh, online. And uh, well, uh, I'll, uh, I I know that maybe um, when answering on the ideal film adaptation of Vanichenko, I would refer to Lie as uh, it's. Um, uh, this uh, fantasiacal uh, aesthetics, uh, um, uh, which was cultivated by the film director, which is Lobeskovsky, who was uh, also coming from Ukraine. Uh, he was uh, born in Odessa, and uh, he was kind of uh, um, a representative of cinematic decadence number one in Russian Empire. Uh, so, uh, so that it was really a good tandem, though we don't know whether Lomachenko might contribute uh, as a scriptwriter. Ob obviously not, so, but. Uh, uh, there, there is still a chance we don't know, uh, but um, well, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I love still uh, those film adaptations by uh, Oleg Bima as uh, he succeeded to capture something uh, important as I tried uh, to illustrate by this example of uh, Bogdan Stupka and uh, this infernal uh, uh, this infernal charm of uh, Bogdan Stupka and his character uh, but uh, for, the, for, for, for this class I offered to my students uh, to watch uh, a short not really a, a play um, on, of Shchiri uh, uh, and Yumnikova uh, a sincere Ukrainian and uh, a modest Ukrainian. I, I, I'm not sure about um, the English translation. I'm not, I'm not sure there is uh, any English translation for the story, as in those collections of uh, short stories um, uh, by Venichenko. I checked in, uh, in libraries. Uh, I, I, I couldn't find the, I, I couldn't find the English um, uh, translation of the story. But uh, this um, kind of uh, binary opposition uh, of uh, this. Um, uh, 
to uh, uh, to Ukrainian identities on on the one hand uh, this uh, uh, radical nationalism too radical uh, which uh, um, can be uh, spoken of from uh, the symbolic place of Petlura and uh, uh, another position which was obviously too um, modest uh, for Venetianka himself. There is some uh, character between, um, in between uh, uh, just some episodic character who would say, well, uh, uh, why not an autonomy for Ukraine? Uh, I, I, I would still think that uh, um, real powerful uh, Ukraine uh, could be raised in alliance uh, with uh, uh, Russia and other Slavic nations, but obviously uh, when Venetianka changed uh, this opinion after his attempt of collaboration with Soviet government okay. in uh, 1920, so, so that, but uh, I, I would advise even this kind of uh, assurance, though, though not a uh, place. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks very much for this question. Okay, we have time for one more question. Anyone else? Okay, well, please join me in thanking.